Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today's just gonna be a short video, a topic I wanted to present to you and hopefully get a little bit more information or a little more insight from anybody who has any ideas that pertain to this subject matter. Now, today we're going to be looking at this beautiful lake in Connecticut, and this is known as Candlewood Lake. Why I wanna share this topic with you and why I wanna discuss it is the whole idea of what we as man, as a society, were able to create, and then looking at the different achievements, we'll call them, that we had throughout the 17, 18, and 1900s. Now, when we look at Candlewood Lake, which by all intents and purposes appears to be all natural, this is the largest lake in all of Connecticut. This is not a naturally occurring lake. This is actually completely man-made. And I found that to be very interesting. We're going to look at a couple photographs here, and then I'm going to present to you what the current narrative has to say about how this was created and why this was created. But I want to pose a little bit deeper question, or at least take a look at some of these more interesting details as to why this was done, or at least why we're told this was done. Now, this lake itself is not uniform in shape at all. A lot of man-made lakes or different man-made features that we see that are really astonishing, you know, especially from the old world, they always have this sort of symmetry to them or this curb appeal, so to speak. They look visually pleasing. Essentially, by using a nearby river and flooding the entire valley, that's basically what we're told happened here. There was not a design to this lake. There was no sort of edge of the lake that was created. There was no shape that was created. All they did was take river water and basically change the flow of the river momentarily to flood this valley. Now, my first question there is why? Why would you not build a shape or build a design build something that you could be in charge of that you could handle that you could manage why would you instead just take water from a river and allow it to flow where it would basically to fill in this entire valley where are the retaining walls where are the reinforcements to make sure there are no leaks or any other issues with this project where is all of the masonry built construction that's really the question that I have here. Now, we're told that the Connecticut Light and Power Company used this lake as the first large scale project in the entire U.S. to utilize pump storage facilities. Essentially, the lake itself was created from water that was pumped uphill from the Rocky River and then it would sit in this lake or the lake of Candlewood was created and it would house all of this water that came from the Rocky River. When energy was needed or when they needed large amounts of electricity, they would release the water from the Candlewood Lake, from this man-made lake, back downhill, which would produce the energy or produce the electricity. So essentially, this entire lake is housing water that is being used to generate electricity. It is quite a feat of engineering. However, I want to tie that back to the overall construction of this man-made lake. What we're told, and when we look at the construction photographs, we can see there is not a lot, if any, masonry being used in this construction. The largest thing that we can see, at least in the construction photographs, were provided the large, basically, vessel that is being used to pump the water. It's about 13 feet in diameter, and it's sitting along the lake bed. And then we can also see these facilities that are being created. But what we don't see is any sort of lining to the walls or the sides of the lake, any sort of construction done with masonry to basically fill in any voids or anything like that. So 
realistically, this project, which was done in the early 1900s, when we should have been entirely more advanced than the 1700s, for example, we have this really simple undertaking, basically going into the creation of Candlewood Lake. And I point that out because I want to compare it to so-called other achievements in construction in water that were done throughout time. For example, we look at the Erie Canal. And when we look at the Erie Canal, we can see very uniform, very well done, masonry built, large stones, large blocks, beautiful brickwork. And we see all of that that was supposedly done 100, 200 years before this project in Candlewood Lake. So I just want to point that out because it definitely seems like the Candlewood Lake project was done very haphazardly. And now why I say that and something else that leads to that narrative a little bit, at least it being kind of questionable, is what we're told was done to make this Candlewood Lake possible. We're told the workers came in and they cleared woodland. And this is according to the current narrative. They chopped down all the trees that would be in this area where this man-made lake is going to be. I mean, I can picture them doing that. There's not a lot of imagination that has to go into that. We're told that they built dams. Now, there could have been more, but realistically, I only saw and heard about two that were created for this man-made Candlewood Lake. So, the dams themselves, yes, there could be masonry or brickwork used in those dams, but even when we look at the photographs of them, the dams themselves are, we'll call it a little bit questionable in their design. They seem to have been here already. They do not look like brand new construction, but it's interesting nonetheless. Now, the other thing that these workers did is that they dug out the high ground. So amongst this lake area, we are told that the workers came in and any sort of hill or area that would be too high for the water once it was basically pumped into this area they basically dug out these hills or these mounds and they made them a little bit lower so that when the water filled in basically there weren't just hills flowing under the water so we're told that they at least did that but we don't see any sort of reinforcement or anything like that being installed in this area. We just have it being flooded then. And I also found that interesting because the numbers that were given. We're looking at 5,420 acres that were flooded. And we're also told that within this large amount of land, there were over 100 buildings that were owned by 35 families. Now, this was actually a village that was pretty popular at the time, and this was known as the village or the town of Jerusalem, Connecticut. And I just found that to be really interesting because according to the current narrative, the village of Jerusalem was completely flooded and completely destroyed for Candlewood Lake to become a thing. Now, I looked for other areas and there were small portions of other towns that were impacted by the creation of Candlewood Lake. But uh, essentially, we have one community that was wiped out for this Candlewood Lake in Connecticut to be constructed. Because we're told that there was many buildings, over 100 buildings, and we're told in the narrative that these buildings were masonry and brick built. So we have this village that at least predated the lake yet the lake itself is built with really minimal material the lake afterwards and the lake today is definitely amazing it's definitely beautiful but i don't think a lot of people realize how it was built realistically they took a large pipe from the rocky river and they flooded an entire valley and they wiped out an entire community and it's just really interesting to me to try and understand why that was done, why they couldn't have possibly 
made this lake in a different area or with a different design with a different shape with a more uniform shape so you wouldn't have had to wipe out an entire valley now we're told today that this candlewood lake and its coastlines encompass over 80 miles of coastline so this is not a small lake by any means and it's just really interesting that this entire thing is called man-made so we do have this candlewood lake having a purpose being a pump storage facility and being an area that basically provides electricity and provides power but we also have a lot of esoteric hidden history about it we have an entire village that is basically submerged under this lake and there were also many aspects of that that i really found interesting including the whole idea that we don't really have it written anywhere in the narrative that these buildings that stood in this area before the lake was here we don't have them really being knocked down and then if you look into other youtube videos or other history about this area currently you'll come to find that different scuba divers have come to find that there are large remains of masonry built and brick built buildings at the bottom of candlewood lake so essentially you have this village of jerusalem which once had apparently pretty massive buildings and these buildings either were washed away or were not completely destroyed and they lie buried under this lake so i really would love to hear from anybody from the connecticut area anybody that has been to candlewood lake and anybody that has any sort of scuba gear or any sort of diving experience if you would ever make your way to this candlewood lake i think it would be really amazing to explore now looking into that portion even further we come to find that different people have it written that you cannot see anything in candlewood lake i read somewhere that the visibility is about 10 feet and really no more than that so essentially when people dive in this area, they're basically having to bump into the remains of these old buildings to find them because you simply cannot see anything within this lake. And that also leads me back to the construction. When we look how there is no sort of layer at the bottom, how there was no walls built, how there was nothing to reinforce this area. Basically, they just flooded it. And now people wonder why the lake itself is so dirty or you can't see to the bottom or you can't see any of the nature or the wildlife within the lake. Well, that is because how haphazardly it was built. And that ties back to the question. The real question of this whole video is why? Why? was Candlewood Lake built like this? Why did they submerge this entire valley? Why did they not put more thought into the engineering process? And why was it done like this? If you have any information or any answers to those questions or any thoughts or ideas at all, I'd love to hear it in the comment section down below. I really appreciate you being here with me. I thought this was really interesting. And not only that, but Candlewood Lake, if I would have seen it, you know, nothing about it would have pointed to it being man-made to me i would have saw this area and thought wow this is really majestic really beautiful and i would have never thought twice that this entire mile and mile and mile long lake is actually a man-made lake so just really interesting facts something new that you learn every day and i had never heard of before so hopefully that was interesting to you and i'd love to hear your thoughts and comments down below i'll talk to you very soon on the next video